Hi there, Jeff here. Here's a quick revision video looking at price and elastic supply. Elasticity of supply measures the responsiveness of supply of a good or service to changes in demand and price. When supply is price elastic, a small increase in price leads to a larger increase in quantities supplied. Suppliers, because they could be manufacturers, uh, can respond quickly to price changes. Whereas when, when supply is priced inelastic, the focus of this video, then the price increase leads to only a small expansion in quantities supplied. Producers find it hard to increase or decrease production in the short term. So what tends to make supply price inelastic? Here are the key factors. First of all, firms may have limited production capacity. They may be already operating at a very high capacity utilisation rate and don't have much spare capital and labour to put into play. They may also be using specialised labour or other inputs, so it's difficult to scale up extra production because of the time and inconvenience and cost of training or licences or the supply of rare materials. The actual production of the good or service may have a long production time. Some goods, like wine or new buildings, they just take a long time to plan and produce. Firms, critically, may lack inventory or stock. Typically, for example, perishable or made-to-order goods like furniture can't be stored necessarily in advance, so there are quite long lead times before consumers can receive the things they've bought. Low substitutability in production. Firms can't always easily switch to producing more of the item. And the short time frame, well, in the short run, most firms have limited flexibility in terms of their inputs. Indeed, in the short term, we normally assume that there's at least one fixed factor of production. And that can, again, limit elasticity of supply. So some examples of price elastic supply. A good one is new housing. There's always a long planning and construction time. Housing zoning laws is their land availability. And critically, in the UK labour market in particular, uh, skilled shortages of people like engineers, uh, structural surveyors and uh, bricklayers. In farming, there are fixed growing seasons. Now that's changing a little bit. It does depend on the weather, but farmers often have very limited short-term flexibility in how much they can produce. Airline seats. There's normally a fixed number of seats per flight and capacity in terms of routes and route networks are planned months in advance. But airlines might be able to put on the odd extra flight but it's a limited uh, ability to do that. Aged wine and whiskey takes years to mature. You can't necessarily accelerate production in the short term without hurting product quality. And things like uh, grids and networks. So the supply of electricity, there could be a limit. Grid capacity has, uh, has a full capacity limit. There could be infrastructure constraints at peak times. We see that, for example, not just with electricity, but also in terms of uh, bandwidth for broadband services. So with a price inelastic supply, uh, I've drawn it as a very steep curve. If demand increases from D1 to D2, then firms can increase supply, but only marginally from Q1 to Q2, and it, and it causes a big increase in price. So a large rise in price from P1 to P2 uh, leads to only a, a relatively small expansion of quantity supplied. Here are some questions to test your understanding. Question number one, which of the following is the best explanation for why farm goods often have price in elastic supply in the short term? What do you think the answer is to question one? Press the pause button and have a go. And the answer to question one is C, growing crops takes time and is season dependent. Question number two is a calculation question. A farm currently supplies 500 apples per day after a 20% increase in price the quantity of supply increases to 520 apples per day. So what is the price elasticity of supply? And the answer is 0 0.2. 20% increase in price leads to only a 4% increase in supply. Question number three. A product has a price elasticity coefficient of 0 0.4. If price increases by 15%, what is the expected percentage change in quantity supplied? What do you think the answer is for question three? Well, this is a low value of price elasticity, 0.4, and the answer is 6%, because 0.4 of 15% is 6%. Now, increasingly, businesses try to find ways of increasing elasticity of supply to make their production more responsive and more flexible to changes in demand. 
So, for example, they might build in to their business model spare capacity. Toyota and Tesla design production lines with flexible shifts and automation. So in theory, they can ramp up production if and when demand or price goes up. Second approach is to improve stock management. Amazon's a really good example of this. They store large quantities of bestsellers in regional warehouses. They have a network in the UK, for example, to help fulfil sudden spikes in demand. For example, in the aftermath of Amazon Prime or seasonal demand. Uh, businesses try to shorten production times. A good example would be Zara. Zara can design, manufacture and deliver new styles to stores in as a matter of a few weeks or a few days. They can respond almost instantly to market trends and price changes. That is one of the defining characteristics of fast fashion. And investment in technology or automation. So Foxconn, a good example. Suppliers such as Foxconn for companies like Apple use robotic lines that can be re reprogrammed quickly to shift output levels and even product types. So there's four ways that businesses might try to make supply more price elastic so that their production of a good or a service can be more responsive to changing market conditions. Thanks for joining in this video.